Hey, it's Anthony here. In today's video, I want to talk about a relatively new tool that you can use to help manage your Python packages in your projects. So this tool is called pipinv, and as you can imagine from the name, it's a combination of really pip and virtual env, or a virtual env as I call it. So what this does is it allows you to install packages on a project by project basis, but you don't have to manually work with a virtual environment. And in addition to that, it also changes the way that dependencies are kind of stored when you are dealing with Python. So if you're familiar with pip, then you know about the requirements file where when you run pip freeze, it will generate all the dependencies in your project in this list. Well, pip env doesn't do that. Instead, it generates two files, one called a pip file and one called a pip file dot lock. And the pip file will cover the packages that you install directly and the pip file dot lock will cover all the dependencies and their version numbers. So instead of talking about it any further, let me just show you. So the first thing you need to do is install pip env and to install it, you need to use pip. So I'm going to run pip install pip Env, so PIP ENV, and this should be sudo, and it's going to install it. So, like I said, one of the cool things about this is you don't have to manage your virtual environments anymore because it will take care of it for you. So, once this is done installing, you'll see how easy it is to use. And if you've used something like npm or yarn, then this will be kind of familiar to you. So it's installed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a new directory. I'm going to call this example project and I'm going to change into that example project directory. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to install something using pip env. So normally I would do pip install whatever I want to install. And of course I'd have to activate my virtual environment first. So I do like source and then uh, wherever the environment would be and then activate, but I don't have to do that anymore. So instead, I'm just going to run one command, pip env, and then install, and let's say flask as the package I want to install. So note that I haven't done anything yet to set this up. I'm just going to install a package directly. And when I do that, it's going to first create a virtual environment for this project. And that virtual environment, I won't have to manage directly pip env is going to take care of it for me. And then once the virtual environment is installed, then it is going to create a pip file that keeps track of all the packages that I install. And then it's going to go ahead and install flask for me. After it installs flask, it's going to create that pip file dot lock file. And once that is done, I have everything installed. So let's take a look at the files that I have. I see two files now. I see a pip file and a pip file dot lock. So if I take a look at pip file first, we see that it has some really basic information, but the most important thing that we want to look at is the packages in this case. So you see flask equals and then you see a star. And that just means I installed the latest version of flask. I didn't install I didn't install any particular version of flask. And then if I close that out and look at the pip file dot lock we see, if I scroll down a bit, we see the dependencies of Flask. So click, it's dangerous, Jinja2, markup safe, work zerg, and that's it. And for each one of the dependencies, it stores the version number, which makes it really easy for me to send this pip file in the pip file.lock to someone else and then they can then install and have exactly the same dependencies that I have. It's pretty straightforward. So let me go ahead and install a second package. Let's say pip pip inv install and we'll install Django this time. So once again, I'm not specifying a version number. I'm just installing the latest version of Django. So it's telling me that it's installing. And note that it doesn't tell me that it's creating a virtual environment anymore because it has already been created for me. So once Django is installed, I'll show you how to actually use that virtual environment if you need to use it for anything. So it's installing Django. And 
It's not giving me any progress, but Django is bigger than Flask. That's why it's taking a little longer to install, but it's still not that big of a package, so it won't take that long. So it should be done any moment now. But once it is done, you'll see how it will tell me that it's updating the pip file and the pip file.lock. And when I go back into those files to look at them, we'll see that Django is there. And then in the lock file, we'll see that the dependencies for Django are there as well. So this is a little slow. So let's just wait and hopefully it will be done in two or three seconds. But I like this so far because I won't forget to activate the virtual environment. I don't have to think about the virtual environment anymore if I don't want to. I can just run pip env install and it will take care of the environment for me. So I see that it has updated the pip file.lock. So let's take a look at the files. So first the pip file. And we see that for packages, Django is now there. And then if I look at the pip file.lock, we'll see that the dependencies have been updated. So I see Django there. And now let's see what else is there. So PyTZ is there because that is a dependency of Django. And it turns out that Django doesn't have as many dependencies as Flask or it shares some. So if I type pip env shell, what this will do is it will activate the virtual environment for me in case I want to do something in that virtual environment. So pip in shell, and you'll see on the left hand side when the prompt comes back, it has the parentheses and the name of my virtual environment. So it's the name of my directory example project, and then some random string there. And that means that my virtual environment is activated. So I can type Python and I have Let's see, import Flask, import Django. They both work because I've installed them. If I try to import something like requests, it will tell me no module name requests because I didn't actually install that with pip env. So now what I'll do is I'll type pip env and then dash dash where, and this will tell me where my project is. So if I were to create another directory, so uh, let's see, subdirectory, I'll just call it, and change directories into that subdirectory and then install something. So pip env install requests. It will know that I'm still in the original project. So it's not going to create another project in that director for me. It's going to only change the pip file that I have in the directory above. So like right now I'm in subdirectory it did not create a new pip file or pip file.lock, but if I go up a single directory and look at the pip file, then we see that request is there. So now what I'll do is I'll create a second project. Let's call this second project and then pip env and I'll use that where again. So now it's telling me that there's no pip file present at project home, meaning this doesn't represent a project yet. So what I can do is I can either install something or I can take the pip files that I have in the other project and move them over here and then install everything. So what I'll do is I'll copy, what am I copying? Uh, example project and then pip file and then I'll just name the, it pip file here and I'll do the same thing for pip file lock. So pip file dot lock pit file dot lock. So we see the two files are there. I just copy them over from the other project. So if I, if I run pip env where again, it now tells me I have a project in this directory. So you see it's referencing second project instead of the example project that I had before. And for this project, I don't actually have a virtual environment yet. So if I run pip env and then shell, it will tell me that my old one is activated. So what I need to do first is I need to exit out the old one. And then what I'll do is I'll run that shell again. And because this is still thinking about my last one, I need to create a new 
shell here. So what I'll do is I'll exit out of this one again, and I'm going to run pip m install. And the problem is it put me back into my example project. So let me go to second project and then pip. And then let me run um, pip env dash dash where. So I'm in the second project. And let me try to spawn that virtual environment again inside of second project. And now it's telling me that inside of second project, it doesn't have a virtual environment, so it's creating a virtual environment. It was a little confusing before because I was running the old virtual environment, but you have to exit out the old one before you can create a new one. So it's creating a virtual environment for this project because I'm in a new directory. And then it's going to start it up. So let me just exit out of it now so I don't get confused again. And you'll note, well, actually, let me start that up again. Because what I want to do is I want to show you how I don't have those packages installed yet. So if I run Python and I type import Flask, it tells me there's no module named Flask. So let me exit out of the virtual environment now. And because I have that pip file and pip file lock, when I run pip env install in this new project directory, what's going to happen is it's going to install all the dependencies in those pip files that I have. So pip env install. And I imagine Django is going to take a little longer again, but what it's doing is it's just going through that pip file.lock and it's looking at all the dependencies and the version numbers and it's installing exactly those version numbers. So if I were to send this to someone else, they would be able to install exactly all the dependencies that I have on my machine uh, using pip env as well. So in that sense, it's kind of similar to sending a requirements.txt file to someone. Although with requirements.txt, you have to generate it manually. With the pip file.lock, you don't have to generate it manually. You can do it on your own. And because it is generated automatically, it's as the hashes, so if you were to modify it, it will no longer work correctly because the hashes wouldn't match the version numbers that you have in there. Whereas with the requirements file in pip, you can easily change one of the numbers in the requirements file and mess everything up because there's no way to verify that that requirements file was generated instead of manually edited by someone. So it's just an extra security feature that makes things a little easier uh, to deal with. Okay, so now that I have this running, I'll run pip m shell again. And then I will start up Python once it activates. So Python, then import Flask. And now it works because I installed all those dependencies for the second project. So that's just a basic overview of pip env. I recommend that you check it out and see if it works well for you. It is actually the official officially recommended packet package manager for Python. So if you want to listen to what Python recommends, then try pip in, even though it's relatively new, it's already good enough to be officially recommended. So give it a try, see if you like it. I'm probably going to be using it in all my videos going forward because it just makes things a little easy for me because I always forget to start my virtual environment when I record these videos. So things get a little messed up and maybe I can just easily send the pit files and the, the pit file and the pit file dot lock to people if they want to install the same dependencies that I had when I created the video. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions about pip env, you can leave a comment down below and I'll answer them. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.